Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will talk about consanguine marriages or cousin marriages. Along with its definition, we will talk about its prevalence, the risk associated with consanguine marriages, and how to manage a case when there is cousin marriage. So what is consanguine marriage? Consanguine marriage is the marriage between individuals who are closely related. In a clinical sense, marriage between two family members who are cousins or closer qualifies as the consanguineous marriage. This is based on the gene copies their offspring may receive. Now, what is the prevalence of consanguine marriage? The overall prevalence of consanguineous marriage was 9.9%. Though these unions are still prevalent in some communities as seen across the greater Middle East regions, many other populations have seen a greater decline in the intra-family marriages. Now the question arises, is consanguineous marriage harmful? The offspring of consanguineous union may be at the increased risk for recessive disorders because of the expression of autosomal recessive gene mutations inherited from a common ancestor. The offsprings of consanguineous relationships are at greater risk of certain genetic disorders. Now, what are the autosomal recessive disorders? Autosomal recessive disorders are the genetic disorders that occur in individuals who are homozygous for the particular recessive gene mutation. This means that they carry two copies or alleles of the same gene. Let us talk about the examples of autosomal recessive conditions. The common examples of autosomal recessive condition include cystic fibrosis, Fanconi anemia, phenylketonuria, sickle cell disease, thalassemia, which is the most common autosomal recessive condition worldwide. And there are high chances of getting all these conditions in consanguine marriages. Now something more about risk of consanguine marriages. The genetic disorders are common in eastern and southern region of KSA. 90% go ahead with marriages anyway. Couples are not obliged to take tests anyway. And there are high risk of birth defects in the children born to parents with sickle cell anemia and thalassemia, which are autosomal recessive disorders common in consanguine marriages. Now, along with uh, those autosomal recessive genetic disorders, which I discussed with you, there is also susceptibility to infectious pathogens in these patients, in these people. Consanguinity in a population increases its susceptibility to infectious pathogens such as tuberculosis and hepatitis, but may decrease its susceptibility to malaria and other pathogens. Now, how to manage a case when two cousins want to get married and they come to healthcare provider to get an advice? In such case, before going for detailed investigations, the history is taken from the couple and it is checked whether among their parents or grandparents there were cousin marriages or not. Moreover, the common genetic disorders are investigated by blood tests in the family. Even if the couple gets married and the woman gets pregnant, the appropriate investigations may save the future baby from certain congenital disorders. And the role of chorionic pilus sampling, amniocentesis, and peri-implantation genetic testing shouldn't be forgotten, although these are invasive testing. Now, here we have a latest report about consanguine marriage in Pakistan. And it states, according to the latest report, Pakistan could face a high risk of genetic disorders caused by inbreeding due to high rate of cousin marriages. Moreover, about inbreeding, it is written that inbreeding is creating a series of health problems in children for decades in Pakistan. Despite being aware of the consequences, cousin marriages are still a norm in many communities in the country. Now the question arises, does consanguineous marriage affect every couple? The answer is no, not every consanguineous marriage is affected. Means for every genetic disorder, we can't blame the consanguineous marriage. But if there is prevailing genetic disorder in a family, which in most of the cases remains undiagnosed, 
due to insufficient health care, there are high chances of abnormalities in the newborn. So we would like to say that as most of the genetic disorders are undiagnosed, so in general, the cousin marriages should be avoided and discouraged in general. And that brings us to the end of my presentation, which I would like to complete with these golden words. Sometimes you have to give up. Sometime knowing when to give up, when to try something else is genius. Giving up doesn't mean stopping. Don't ever stop. Thank you so much. I wish you all the best. Allah Hafiz.